yeah well we can open up the questions uh it was a fun first night of the draft and look forward to tomorrow with our our, our two second round picks uh and then working toward the the weekend here so uh with that we'll take your questions and get ready to roll for tomorrow let's go first to herbie to go ahead, herbie hey brad good evening hey herbie you mentioned it was a fun night. Mm -hmm. How much did that fun uh, entice you to maybe trade back into the first round? And I have a second question after this. No, I, I mean, like I said, I think the value of this draft is really that uh, first part of two into the early mid stage of three. So, um, I mean, there was there wasn't a time where there was any temptation um, when we made that move for Orlando. That was the guy we won it and we were happy and content to, to work with these two twos tomorrow. And speaking of that second round, Anthony, I know you called it a hot zone. How much does some of this action and some of the trades in the first round affect that zone, in your opinion? And then those, those, is it still considered a hot zone? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I don't I don't think there's really any surprises. Uh, you know, now some of the trades and, and how they worked out, um, you know, when I leave this Zoom here, I'll get back up uh, to the draft room with my staff. And, it, you know, it may affect some uh, tomorrow just because of the teams that trade it. it. It impacts their needs and what they wore if they they made some moves that, you know, you weren't expecting. And now they uh, they feel the need, but the team trading back, maybe they have a similar need and, and what have you. So uh, we'll work through those scenarios uh, tonight into tomorrow morning and, and be ready to go. So I think we'll know more tomorrow when when the dust settles here and we look and, and we evaluate the trades and then we compare the the trades with the with the team needs or the perceived team needs that, that we believe those teams have. Next to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Brett. Um, curious about Orlando Brown. Just uh, what, what you guys liked about him when you sort of decided that was the guy you had to have as your left tackle. And Brett, I'll have a follow up as well. We looked at the the draft, and you know, as we mentioned earlier, Adam, just uh, picking thirty one and, and and wanting to have a, a plug and play guy, um, and not just a, a tackle, uh, a, a real tackle, a, a Pro Bowl caliber tackle. And I had the opportunity to talk to a lot of people during this process that that work with Orlando in the past in New Orlando, and um, it was very consistent with what we had on him coming out. Just a high character guy, really smart, loves the process, all the things we talk about. We talk about the check boxes for these offensive linemen. Uh, durable. The guy doesn't miss any snaps. He's smart. Uh, he's he's tough. He loves the process, and uh, that's that's an infectious trait. And that you know, losing some guys like Fisher and and, and Schwartz, um, it, you know, it's one thing to replace uh, you know the uh, the athlete, but also uh, the type of people these guys were and what they bring into the locker room. So um, you, you know, you talk about Orlando, and he has all those attributes you look for the size the length uh the mental toughness the durability the leadership so uh hard to find that uh you know the these guys that you're looking at i mean a lot of these guys you like and, and they have developmental upside but uh, i mean we're certainly um built to win and built to win now and, and to have a plug and play guys very hard and um that's why we couldn't pass up that opportunity okay and and what is the plan as far as signing him to a long-term contract uh you're gonna wait on that are you going to try to get something done maybe this summer before camp gets going yeah we'll, we'll see you know we have some some different things that, that we're working through and um we had great dialogue with him and his agent uh before the trade and and if something got worked out great but they were also content on on, on playing it out and, and having us uh have some time to work through some other stuff and then get into um, next off season. And, and as we all know, the cap situation will probably uh, increase and there'll be more flexibility and we can get more creative. So um, whether that be this year or, or next year, we have some time, but I think the important thing for us was there was open dialogue and both parties understood that um, if it couldn't get done that, you know, um, we'd go into the season and try to knock it out. Let's go next to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Hey, Brett, uh, just curious about your thoughts on the AFC West and, and what, it did tonight uh, in uh, Sertan, Slater, and Leatherwood. Yeah, I think the you know those teams were were probably following their board and taking the best players available. As you mentioned, Sertan one of the top corners uh, in, in the draft, and uh, wasn't surprising from a, a defensive a, you know former defensive coordinator, the head coach there. But I mean, great player and uh, Oakland and in LA going on the offensive line, good value there. And and you know I think the teams are. Are, are just probably staying true to the board, taking the best player available. But, you know, uh, all those teams took took some good players and and look forward to that competition with those guys. Let's go next to Sam McDowell. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, Brett. Um, hey, Sam. 
As, as you went through your mock drafts over the past couple of weeks and anticipated what might be there at 31, um, did the reality today match that? Or was there something maybe there, somebody there that you didn't anticipate being there at 31? No, I think, I think it kind of played out. I don't think there's any real surprises. I think when you get to the last four or five picks, it, those are always guys that, that some teams have in one, some teams have in two, some teams have in mid two. So I think you look at the draft, I, I mean, the first, I, I want to say, I'm looking at here, I mean, the first 18 to 24 picks, that uh, these were guys that if we didn't have in one, we had early two. And then uh, I would say pretty much even toward the end there, these guys, I mean, obviously Turner, Stokes, Rousseau, uh, the pass rusher from Penn State, Tryon, these are all guys that we liked right in that range. I don't think there's any huge surprises or any big curveballs, but that's typical for a first round. I mean, I, I would say every year there's a couple. I don't know if there are really any this year, but uh, there'll certainly be a lot more uh, tomorrow, and and that's why I think having those two twos will be very advantageous for us. We've got three more. We'll go right down the line, starting with Matt Derrick. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, Brett. Um, good to talk to you there. I'm curious just how you thought about the first round and how it unfolded as far as what the depth is at some of the positions uh, that remain there for the second round. And how much conversation have you got, had with your, your staff about staying alert and being ready to move up if you want to? Well, we're going we're to get together right now after I get off the Zoom. First round just ended. And, you know, again, I don't think there's a lot of surprises. Um, but once I get off here, we're going to go and, and kind of redo the board and, and restack it and reshuffle it and, and try to position ourselves for where we need to be. And uh, I think we're happy with the numbers and, and kind of how they, they worked out. And, and again, having 58 and 62, I think we're going to be in a good spot to get a couple of good players and have some flexibility. And as far as the first round, again, I, I mean, I think it was kind of well documented that the quarterbacks were going to go early. Uh, there was obviously three really good wideouts and, and they went early. And, and then it's kind of just picking at some of those positions we talked about uh, during this process, the O line, uh, the D line or DN position, uh, and the cornerback position. There was a run of corners uh, in the early part, and then toward the end there, there was a couple corners go off the board. So I, I think it kind of played out. I, I mean, not exactly. I don't think it ever plays out exactly like you think, but I just think in general, uh, from a thousand foot view, I think it. You know, the players went maybe not in the order that you, you thought, but I think they all went. Uh, kind of in those zones you thought they're going to go. But again, uh, I think the value here is really this the second round into the mid third. And, and again, excited about having those two twos. Let's go next to Sarin Petro. Go ahead, Sarin. Uh, Brett and Brett, I'll have a, a follow up here real quick. Uh, first of all, big story uh, as this draft was getting going in the afternoon was Aaron Rodgers wanting out. And then there's a report out that the deal's almost done. I talked to some people that that news was coming from Aaron Rodgers. Um, that's how I was getting to the guy who reported, Mark Schlereth. Uh, I think it's well known. I'm just curious, how much does that, that was a big buzz for football fans. How much does that penetrate your room? Well, I, it does just because uh, it was it was kind of all, all over uh, social media. And, and I think right when I sat down, I, some of my guys in the room were, were saying, hey, I mean, there's some rumblings of, of Rodgers going to Denver, but uh, you know, we're hearing all this stuff in real time, just like you guys are. Uh, certainly, we're not going to have any inside information when uh, the trade uh, pertains to a, a rival team like Denver. So, I mean, you hear about it, you talk about it, but uh, it it seemed like a lot on the day of the draft. And, you know, I, <laughs> to, that's a lot of juggling uh, parts there for <laughs> picks and players and contracts and how they fit into the cap on the day of. So, I, I mean, look, it, sometimes you don't know what's real and what's not, but I mean, usually when it picks up traction by a, a ton of people that are kind of in the know, you, you, you know, you, you certainly look into it and um, look at that kind of stuff. But it, at the end of the day, it's not going to affect what we do. I mean that, you know, we have a game plan. We obviously are, um, you know, we're excited about our team, where we are, our talent and, and how we can improve. So um, listen to it and, pay attention but more so as a sports fan and and it's it's just um it's good social media reads and stuff like that but no yeah i mean they're in our division so you pay a little bit more attention to that but again i mean we're focused on on controlling what we can control and 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 worrying about ourselves and how we can get better and then you talked about a couple of the runs that were going on uh you know different spots how easy you still got to sit for a little bit uh, yeah. tomorrow before you get in there so how accurate can you be uh, on knowing where things are going to go? I mean, I know in some ways it doesn't matter, right? You'll know who's available when you get there. But uh, as far as like maneuvering around or maybe moving down, how accurate when you get together in this meeting after this Zoom do you guys uh, usually get and projecting what's going to be there when he gets to you? Yeah, so we'll have um, 
we'll have uh, a chance to get up there and, and then stack the numbers. And, you know, we have some formulas of, of how many numbers you need. And I think our first pick is pick 26 in round two. So how many numbers we need in round two to, you know, feel 80% confident, 90% confident and what have you. But I think the benefit for us is addressing that left tackle need that we can go in any different direction. I mean, we can go O-line, we can go D-line, we can go corner, we can go safety linebacker. So I think that's the benefit of, of where we are and having those two twos that we're not pigeonholed into saying, man, we need a left tackle we got to get this taken care of um once we address that need and we were able to acquire another second round pick it really opened the entire board for us and allowed for maximum flexibility we'll go last to nate taylor go ahead nate hey brett thanks again for doing this just sure. to be off of uh just to pick off what matt was saying and, and kind of leading in the syringe question too how much on the initial look does this remind you of what you guys were trying to do in 2019? Obviously, you got McCole Hardman, you got Mom Thornhill. Is that the hope and the goal tomorrow, um, depending upon how you look at the board now versus what will ultimately happen tomorrow night? Well, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I think that, you know, we're just trying to acquire good players. And I think, again, I go back to – uh, you know, our off season, we wanted to address the offensive line and, and we were able to add Joe Tooney. And then there was still obviously a, a glaring hole there at left tackle. And we have some, um, some young talent there that we're working through and with Yang coming back uh, more of a right tackle and Remmers will work at right tackle. So I, we just came into this process of wanting to be flexible and wanting to really stick to the board, take the best player available. And once we are able to acquire Orlando, you know, we felt like we made that possible and as far as, you know, what we're trying to accomplish now, we're just trying to add good players. And, and again, I think the benefit for us is we can go in literally any direction. Uh, again, other than quarterback, I think anything's on the table for tomorrow.